guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to attempt bookstagram, book Instagram type photos. And this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk about that more later. So Bookstagram has always been my eternal struggle. I've been on Instagram for my channel since I started my channel. And as the years have gone on, things have gotten very, very complicated with the Bookstagram photos. And I envy the Bookstagrammers where that's their main platform and they can do all the pretty pictures, but I still haven't wrapped my brain quite around how all of those things happen. Yeah, Bookstagram photos are, are very intimidating to me. I, I haven't been able to wrap my brain around a lot of photography things. Photography has always been something that I've wanted to do and learn, and I've watched a, many a video on photography over the years, and I just couldn't really grasp it. And also during graduate school, I was like, I don't have time to learn this particular skill because all of my brain power is going elsewhere. So during graduate school, my Instagram basically stopped happening with the photos. I still use it a lot for Instagram stories, as many of you know, but the, the photography part of it dwindled. So one of my goals now for the coming year in general is to take more pictures, to document my life more, to just have photos because I've realized over the years and looking back at the last like even 10 years or so that I don't have a lot of photos of myself, the things I'm doing, the things I like, any of that. So for the month of September, actually, I plan on doing a little challenge for myself and that's taking a picture every day, not necessarily a bookstagram photo, but just a photo of what I'm doing. And since BookNet Fest is happening, since my vacation to Florida is happening, which is part of BookNet Fest, it's all compiled together, then I figured that September is a good time to start that because hopefully I can build momentum and everything. But right now I'm just trying, trying to learn the bookstagram photos. I'm gonna take you kind of on this journey with me of the things that I learn and attempt with the bookstagram pictures. So like I said, nothing complicated here. I'm not doing anything crazy, like the crazy flat lays and all. I don't have, I can't, I, mm, I can't yet. This is beginner, this is 101. I'm not even giving any tips right now, really. I'm just telling you kind of what I'm learning along the way and we'll see if my bookstagram feed suddenly gets a little better, a little improved. I'm not gonna be expert level. I'm just gonna improve a little bit. One of the ways that I decided to learn a little bit more about photography and specifically iPhone Instagram kind of photography was through Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes from experts on things like photography and Instagram, growing an Instagram following and taking mobile photos, which is what I'm using it for. But they also have a ton of classes on things like business, cooking, side hustles, productivity, anything artsy, creative that you wanna learn, Skillshare has videos by experts on. On that topic. And a premium membership to Skillshare gives you unlimited access to all of those classes. An annual subscription to the premium membership at Skillshare is less than $10 a month. If you'd like to try it out for free for two months, I have a link down below for the first 500 people that click on that link, you will get two months of the premium membership for free to see if Skillshare is for you. Now for this particular learning experience of mine, I started with the class iPhone photography. Make your pictures stand out. And this was just basic iPhone photography. I have an iPhone 6, nothing new and fancy, and I just wanted the, the very basics. And you'd be surprised, I've watched a lot of videos on like YouTube and stuff about just photography, and this had more, way more tips about just little features and stuff that I never really knew about from even those videos. So I was pleasantly surprised about all the little tips that I got to try out for my photos. First tip she talked about was to clean your lens, both the front lens if you're taking a front photo, and the back lens if you're taking a photo that's normal. And you know what? That's really smart. And I never really think about it unless my photo's like super smudgy. But um, yeah, it's good to have a clean lens, you know, just because phones get kind of gross, you know? So smart, smart tips. Sometimes the most obvious tips are the best ones, really. I'm also shooting this video at like three o'clock in the afternoon and this is not the ideal lighting. So I'm probably not gonna take my photos right now because I've learned, I knew this, but I extra learned that the perfect time to take photos is like an hour before sunset or an hour before sunrise because of how good the lighting is. So now is not the best time for photos. I might take a few though, we'll see, we'll see. So the first thing I'm gonna do, it's probably loud out here because the air conditioners and stuff, but my balcony is like one of the only places where I could shoot photos right now since it's like direct overhead sunlight everywhere else. So I'm gonna change some of the camera settings on my phone. So I'm gonna put the grid 
on my phone. Better set up a good composition for my photos and see how that works. And then also play around with some of like the exposure settings and stuff, which I didn't really know existed on the iPhone because I don't take pictures. So yeah, I'm gonna turn on grid. And now my camera has this grid setting. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? But it's the grid that's gonna help set up my composition for photos. So I'm gonna play around with a couple photos of spinning silver and language of thorns, which, wow, way to be on like Eastern European kind of brand right now. But that's what I'm gonna go for and see how they turn out based on some of the tips that I've gotten. Still probably gonna be basic, but we're gonna try to step up our photo game. One of the tips was to take a photo through something and I didn't really have a lot of things to take the photo through, but the succulent situation didn't work. Also, my dog is scared because I have a balloon right there from my graduation party, and its movement just terrified her. Are you so scared? Take a picture with the book. Take a picture with the book. We'll see how those turned out. One of the things I learned beyond using the grid was that you hold down and that kind of fixes the exposure on a certain item, which I sort of knew, but you can actually lock it on and you can also do the exposure from there. So there's a little bar on the side and you can move the exposure up and down on that bar for the sun. Had no idea. I had no idea there were such advanced settings on the iPhone. So here's what I came up with for my photos. This is how I would typically take an Instagram photo. I like it. I think it looks pretty. I like the background. You know, no big deal. That's what I typically do with photos. Some of the tips were to take things from different angles that you usually wouldn't take them from. So I did this, kind of focusing in on the one side of it and seeing how that looked. I don't mind it. it has a little bit of not quite bokeh. Bokeh is the like blurring effect of like background and stuff but it just has a little more interesting contrasts I think a little bit but nothing super crazy then here's the dog photos with the book which would obviously be turned a different way in actual Instagram and my feet would not be in them but these are actually super cute oh I already deleted a lot of them because some of them she just wasn't looking but these are super adorable and I want to integrate more doggy cuteness in my photos because of this. This is her uh, scared of that balloon again. Look at that genuine fear. But yeah, she looks great paired with this book. So I feel like more dogs with books is gonna happen. Then I end up going after dinner and taking some photos kind of as the sun was setting and just kind of experimenting. I don't love necessarily how these turned out. Maybe with some editing I might. These might still show up on Instagram, but this is a little bit overexposed. I was playing around with the exposure. I was trying to get the sunset in the background. It's not bad and it's different than what I would usually do. Then I did this kind of like framing thing with, you know, shooting it through something like I was trying to do with the succulents and I'm kind of digging it, but like still this isn't perfect because there would be less branches in front of the actual cover. But like, this looks kind of cool, right? Like I would have never tried this before. You know, it's all about really experimenting, but we have some bokeh going on. Like, you know, it's, it's different, you know, not quite perfect, but again, I might, something, something might work out. I like the lighting, but yeah, it's still not quite framed nicely, but I still, you know, I'm glad I tried it. Then we have this one, which is, I, I really like this. Nothing special about this, obviously, but I did take it outside with some nature backdrop for this like tree cover. You know, I, again, I'm not a prodigy, okay? But I, I do like how this turned out. And I was playing a little bit around with exposure and stuff. You can't tell much of a difference, but I like how that looked. And then I just was like, ooh, I should take a picture of the sunset, ooh. And that's a kind of a framing thing, taking it through something. You see, I'm learning things. I'm learning things from the classes, okay? So is this anything special? No. Is this better than a photo of the sunset I would have taken before I tried to learn the tips? Yes. Yes, it is, in fact. Then I tried some more with the Immortalist, but I just didn't really like how these turned out as much. I wanted something to work with the door backdrop, but I wasn't really digging it. Then I took some photos on some rocks outside of my house, which again, what I noticed in this little photo-taking extravaganza is that I found 
some like I started looking for things that would make interesting photos. So I'm hoping this month of me taking photos is going to cause me to start seeing scenarios in which photo taking would be good, like photo taking opportunities. If I get a photo taking eye, that's a success in and of itself. I kind of like how these turned out because it worked really well with the colors on the cover. So I dig it. You know, I think it, it looked pretty good. And these were just outside of my apartment complex. You know, like right next to the air conditioner. But I was like, oh, that's some cool texture, so let's try it out. And I never would have thought of that before. So that was my beginning iPhone photography experience for taking book photos. And then I'm also going to apply to other photos. Like I said, I want to take more like lifestyle photos, document my life type photos. It's a goal of mine to do now that I feel like I have the time to do it. So if you want to follow me on Instagram and stuff and see my progress with this, now that I'm saying it out loud, I have to do it. My Instagram is listed down below, so now I'm going to be semi-held accountable to actually take the Instagram pictures. But I hope you guys enjoyed going on this learning experience with me. Again, the link for the Skillshare two months free is listed down below. And comment down below and let me know if you have any photography tips, if you are also going on a similar photography journey, if you want to take more photos. I just, I'm not a photo taker, and I want to be. I want to take photos of the things I'm doing so I can remember them because I have a horrible memory. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!